All right, let's talk a little bit about how to optimize a website for technical SEO. So again, technical SEO is improving the back end of the website, how it's delivered, how it relates to search indexes so that it's faster and better overall so that search engines can have higher confidence in it. Um, let's go through some of these big ideas step by step and uh, understand how to optimize a website for search engines. Number one, secure your site experience. We talked about this before, but it's SSL. So checking, doing a scan of your website to make sure that all elements are being served through your secure certificate. Uh, this could be images, uh, scripts, anything that's being pulled in or served out needs to be going through the SSL. And so that is going to improve your search engine rankings. Next, make your site mobile friendly. We've talked about responsive design. This is a real key. If there are elements on your page that pop and jump around after the page loads, especially on a mobile device, this is going to be a bad user experience. Google can see that and they're punishing websites that don't load properly, fast and properly um, for especially the first paint of content, the first screen of content that someone sees. So making your website mobile friendly is really important now for SEO. Next up, eliminate dead links. Doing a scan or using Google Search Console to find broken links. These are things that you can fix that are very easy to fix. And it's very hard to get inbound links or develop new content. This is one of those things that's not very difficult to do that can be operationalized and done once a month, once a quarter, and you can improve your website's readiness for search engines just by planning and making a protocol to go in and do a scan and check and resolve any dead links. Next up is site speed. And we talk a lot about this elsewhere, but this is one of the biggest factors over the last two to three years uh, for search engines like Google, uh, especially on mobile devices, but also for desktop. So some things that you can do there to make improvements are evaluate your hosting service. Make sure you're using a fast hosting service, uh, using a fast DNS system and setup, making sure that there are no errors or problems with your domain through your DNS settings. Next up is minimize HTTP, HTTP requests by limiting the use of scripts and plugins. Every time if you're on WordPress that you add a plugin, you're adding essentially a set of things that have to happen to make the website work, even if you're not using that plugin a lot. So getting rid of any plugins you're not using in WordPress is a good thing. And also having an evaluation of your website's page speed to understand which scripts might be spinning or causing some, uh, we call it a memory hog or a memory drain, finding those problems in your setup and eliminating them is a good thing to do. And the Google page speed tool will point you to which scripts seem to be causing most of the trouble. Often when we get into a website and we start troubleshooting page speed, we find a lot of things running that are no longer, that are not in use. Uh, and so taking those things out um, either by deactivating plugins or moving that script to operate after the first paint of the page has been loaded. There are lots of different ways to attack this problem, but getting those out of the equation is helpful. Uh, next up is using uh, CSS, making sure that it's working well, using images that are as small as possible without a degradation of quality, compressing your web pages. There are a number of ways to do this, sometimes with content management coordinated plugins. Uh, so for WordPress, you can compress content to make it serve faster. And just overall minimizing code. Uh, there's some things called Minify, some resources that are out there. And uh, using Minify either as a plugin on WordPress or just as a concept uh, to reduce the amount of code that has to be sent and served out through an HTTP request, that can really change things. So looking at the Minify resources guide is a good idea, but it's also just a mindset of lighter, faster, better. All right, next up, duplicate content. Um, this is a big topic. We've talked about it elsewhere, but getting rid of any different multiple paths to the same material, uh, even if you're just excluding them from search indexes in your robots.txt file, but being aware of those and excluding uh, bad uh, copies 
uh, that you don't want indexed. This could be like a printer friendly version of something, or it could be where you have multiple ways to get something that creates different URLs. You can get rid of those. Make sure that you have canonical URLs and make sure that you don't have in your search in index competing versions of your own content such that you're sort of deflating the value of your content and uh, it's not ranking as well as it should. So yeah, duplicate content. Uh, next up, develop an XML sitemap, making sure that you have sitemaps running on your site, knowing when they were added, how they're maintained, uh, making sure that when you update content on your website, your sitemap is automatically updated. And as we've mentioned elsewhere, considering a sitemap for your video content. If you have a video content heavy website experience, you can increase and maintain the positive confirmation of that content being indexed by having your own XML sitemap for video content. Next up is consider accelerated mobile pages. Um, this is something that's been a big deal or not a big deal over the last, goodness, probably eight or 10 years now. But AMP is a tool from Google. It's a way to compress your content and make a, a stripped down version of it to show to mobile users. Uh, you have to make decisions here if that's the experience that you want to offer. Google likes it because it makes super fast pages. And, for, you know, Google's a service business. They want fast pages for their users so their users don't go elsewhere. Well, for you to have fast pages helps Google have fast pages in, in their search results listings. So AMP is a good thing to consider if you have some things that are text heavy, uh, and not so, you know so complicated that there are a lot of functions on the page. And if you can offer a stripped down experience and be the search result that gets there faster, Google will smile on that. Next up is a similar idea using structured data markup. Structured data markup is a way to take data that either appears in tables on your website or just as an interstitial element or an aspect of maybe a product presentation. It could be specs that get popped open or inline content that shows specs. If you use structured data markup, you can tag all of that content in the way that your website works and have that content transferred and ready to show directly in a search results listing. Some really good examples of this that I like to go to are events data. If you, I'm in Nashville, we have a lot of local events. And if you're a small bar that has somebody coming to play and you want to sell more tickets, it would be nice to have that content show up directly in the search results page with, you know, times and tickets available. And uh, it, it speeds up the ease of the person consuming the information to know exactly who who's playing and where and when and to make a purchase decision so they can then click through and make a make a purchase. Uh, another way that this structured data markup can be really helpful is if you have a shopping feed. So having that content uh, that you've tagged correctly for Google can also be used to show it in search results pages. So you might have something come up in a, come up in a shopping feed or come up in an organic listings feed with expanded product information data below it because Google sees the structured data markup and says, oh, we recognize that. We can use that in a couple of different ways, whether it's a shopping feed or just in organic search results. And it often pops up as an expanded listing. So it has the added benefit of pushing competition off the page. It's taking up more space on the search results page. And that's a good thing for you. Next up, we've talked about this one elsewhere, register with Google Search Console and being webmaster tools. Using those tools and monitoring your website to fix anything that's flagged in their system is a good basic best practice now for SEO. All right, uh, this has been how to optimize websites for technical SEO. And remember, a, an optimized website loads fast. It's easy for search engines to crawl. It doesn't confuse search engines with duplicate content. It doesn't have dead links and everything that's served out through an HTTP request, whether you can see it or not, is secure through the SSL certificate. All right, we'll see you on the next one.